In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a horizontal alignment from survey points by using the curve fitting tool in conjunction with the horizontal element tools. I've already done a little work beforehand in preparing this alignment. You can see here that I have points in my cocoa buffer and I can view these points. So these are the points that were surveyed and what we want to do is create a center line alignment that is best fit among these points. So what I did was to use the geometry command here, create edit alignment by Kogo point. This allowed me to create an alignment by graphically selecting these Kogo points. And you can see here the results of that alignment. And if we take a look then at the integrity of this alignment, and to pull this up, you would right click on the alignment name and select check integrity. You can see that this is just a series of linear elements that make up this alignment. So what we want to do is use the command geometry utilities curve fitting. And what this command will do is create a new horizontal alignment that is defined with both lines and arcs. So I'm going to give my alignment a name here. We'll call that best fit. I'm going to make sure that my primary control is set to this linear element alignment here, which is field one. And I'll click apply. You can see now that this alignment has been created. And if we check integrity on that, you can see it is a combination of both arcs and linear elements. Now if we view this alignment, you do see here that we have some issues here with it being non-coincident. And this is typical. Uh, this command is really just to be used for kind of a first estimate um, on the alignment. And more likely than not, you will have to go in and make some changes to the alignment. Okay, so let's delete what we have here now, leaving just the points for reference. And if we view this best fit alignment, you can see that everything looks pretty good until you get up here. And there was an area here that left a gap because the curve fitting tool was not able to find a solution there. So what we're going to do is use the horizontal element tools to repair this area. Now, as with anything, there's a, a variety of different ways that you can do this. It's really up to the user what combination of arcs and spirals and linear elements they wish to use. But I'm going to just show one way to do that. So we're going to keep this check integrity box here to use as a reference. And we'll click here and you can see that the first point that has the issue is the, the end of this linear element here is non-coincident with the curve that follows it. So up until this point, we're fine. Then we have this linear element, then we have, or this circular element, and then we have a gap, and then we have a series of three circular elements. So since we're at the end of the alignment, uh, the easiest thing to do here is going to be to delete these elements and recreate them. But before I do that, I want to draw some construction lines here just to help me out. So I'm basically going to draw these lines at the end of each element. And then before I delete any of these, I'm going to record the radiuses that the curve fitting command determined. So I'm just going to make a note of these. I'm actually just writing them down. So we've got 
a radius of 586.678 for this arc, 249, 137 for the next, 157, 143, uh, sorry, 157, 413, and then 1834.014. So now that I've recorded those values, I can go in and delete these elements. And to do that, I'll go to Geometry, Horizontal Element, Delete Element. So now if we look again at Check Integrity, you can see everything up to this point looks just fine. So we're going to go in now and place new horizontal elements. So we're going to start here and we're going to create our first curve and that's going to be a floating curve. And for speed here, you can see that it's listed here in the horizontal element tool set. We have a floating curve. I've also created a toolbar up here, so I will be using this toolbar as I work through this next series of commands. So I want to add a floating curve here. And I'm going to define that by point and radius. So I know that my first radius here, I, since I had written that down, I know that it was 586.678. So I'm going to select this element and I'm going to float it up to the end of this first arc. And I'm going to snap to that, and I'm going to accept that. And you can see now if we look at check integrity, that last curve has been added. This tangent was lengthened slightly, but you can see that we have good integrity here. Okay, moving along, I'm just going to create my next floating curve. I'm going to just take a look at how that looks. So let's go ahead and add another floating curve. Now remember, uh, we had copied this radius down as 249.137, so I'm going to key that in. Click Apply. We'll select this element, and we're going to float this curve up to this location. I'm going to accept that. Okay, we're just going to continue around adding these floating horizontal curves. So the next one's going to be 157.413. Going to click Apply. And we'll float this one around. And last, we're going to add a, another floating horizontal curve. The radius on this one was 1834.014. I'll click Apply. I'm going to float this up and accept. So now when we take a look at our integrity, you can see that all of our integrity checks out just fine. So like I said, there are a number of different variations that you can use to work with these last few elements to fit them in there. And that's really up to the user as to uh, what sorts of elements they would like to add, whether it be lines, curves, or spirals. But the important, the important part of this is that you can use the curve fitting tool to kind of get your first best guess and pull out some of those radiuses that you can use as you construct your alignment.